This day in weather history, September 25th, 1939. The only tropical storm to ever make landfall in California during the 20th century. It officially has no name, but it's been classified as the 1939 Long Beach Tropical Storm or 1939 California Tropical Storm. And in Mexico, it's called El Cordonazo or the Lash of St. Francis. And that's due to storms forming around that time of the year, around October 4th, during the Feast of St. Francis. Now, normally tropical storms and hurricanes do not come this far north in the Pacific towards California. And that's due to two reasons. The first reason is because of the cooler sea surface temperatures off the coast of California. For a tropical storm to form, it needs sea surface temperatures that are 80 degrees Fahrenheit or 26 degrees Celsius, and the coast of California does not have that. In fact, the coast of California has temperatures that are 20 degrees Celsius or 60 degrees Fahrenheit. So as storms move north in the Pacific, they gradually weaken into extra tropical phase due to these cooler waters. The cooler waters off the coast of California are due to two reasons. The first is due to the California current, which moves south from the Gulf of Alaska and brings colder waters from the northern latitudes to the southern equatorial region. The second reason for the cooler waters off the coast of California is due to what's called coastal upwelling. And what that means is as the California current moves south along and parallels the California coast, it causes an upwelling current to bring colder, cooler waters from the deep ocean to the surface of the ocean. And that replaces the warm water that would normally be on top of the ocean with the cooler, colder water from below. Now, the second reason that California doesn't get a lot of hurricanes and tropical storms is due to the trade winds. The trade winds near the tropics move in an easterly direction. This means storms coming off the coast of Africa in the form of tropical waves move from east to west across the Atlantic towards the Caribbean islands and into the Gulf of Mexico and occasionally up the east coast of the United States. The opposite is uh, uh, true in the Pacific. Due to these easterly winds, the storms move from east to west away from land. So that's the reason why California will see less storms. Occasionally though, Hurricanes do turn north and northeast, like in the Atlantic, due to upper-level troughs. In the Atlantic, this creates what's called a fish storm that doesn't affect land except for maybe Bermuda. In the Pacific, this brings the storms back towards land. In the case of Tropical Storm 1939, an early storm from the Gulf of Alaska created an upper-level trough that turned this hurricane to the north and then to the northeast towards Southern California. The storm formed as a tropical depression on September 15, 1939, off the coast of Central America. There, it traveled west-northwest until it was southwest of the Baja Peninsula off the coast of Mexico. It, at that point, it strengthened to a Category 2 hurricane and was classified Hurricane Number 9 for the 1939 season. It was at this point that it started interacting with that upper-level trough and started turning to the north and then towards the northeast. It approached Southern California starting on September 24, 1939, 
still as a Category 1 hurricane, and then made landfall early the next morning on September 25, 1939, as a tropical storm with maximum sustained winds of 65 miles per hour and made landfall near San Pedro, California. The storm crashed huge waves along the southern California coast. Here you can see a huge wave that was crashing along the Belmont shore. All along the coast, houses were destroyed or completely knocked off their foundations and swept away out to sea. Here you can see some of that destruction along the Alamitos Peninsula. And then again here along the Long Beach coast in California. And in Sunset Beach in Orange County, California. Now, due to those same waves and from the storm's winds, a fishing barge named Minnie A. Kane was brought to shore near Santa Monica. The storm dropped heavy rain in and around the Southern California area. Los Angeles recorded 5.66 inches of rain and Mount Wilson recorded a record 11.60 inches of rain. Now all that rain had to go somewhere eventually and it flooded the normally dry Los Angeles River and caused this destruction that can, you can see in downtown Los Angeles. On September 25, 1939, the LA Times mentions the storms, 65 mile per hour winds, and initial death toll. It also mentions that the storm brought with it the end to a month-long heat wave from all the rain that started from this storm. On September 26th, the San Diego Union also has many articles and about this storm as well. The storm killed 93 people in total, 45 at sea, and 48 on land due to mostly flooding. It cost $2 million in damage in 1939 dollars, which is equivalent to $36.7 million in 2020. Because of the unpreparedness of this storm, the Weather Bureau which is now known as the National Weather Service in the United States, opened a Southern California office in February 1940. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and leave a comment. Please share this video with your family and friends on social media. And if you're new and like detailed weather breakdowns, please hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. Thank you and have a great day.